Have you ever had a fancy meal? Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> Donna, what was your fanciest meal ever? You have to butcher's show the map. Block, the butcher's block. What's the fanciest restaurant you've ever been to? At Kotai, it's a Michelin-rated restaurant, Korean barbecue. My, Mike said he's been on a cruise, cruise ship once. Unreasonable Hospitality, book, new book by Will Gadara. Will's a former co-owner of 11 Madison Park. They were at one point the number one restaurant in the world. Three Michelin stars. Will is the founder of Thank You, a hospitality company, co-author of a ton of cookbooks. It's a hospitality book. I was given it by one of our clients. I just got through it, just ripped through it over the holidays. In every book that I read, there's things I like and there's things I dislike. My notes aren't just all the positive highlights because I'm not gonna agree with everything, nor should I. So I'm gonna give you a few of the biggest hits and misses from the book, in our opinion, here they are. Service is black and white, hospitality is color. Success comes in cans, failures come in cans. Now this wasn't an 11 Madison Park quote, it was a Shake Shack quote. The bigger we get, the smaller we have to act. I think that's a great hospitality point. At the end of the day, the best way to respect and reward the A players on your team is to surround them with other A players. This is how you attract more A players. There's a lot of talk about people and one point Will made is the perfect moment to give someone more responsibility is before they're ready. People often confuse hospitality and luxury. Luxury means just giving more. Hospitality means being more thoughtful. Hospitality is a dialogue, not a monologue. So those are some of the biggest hits. But in my opinion, here are some of the misses. Managing staff boils down to two things how you praise people, and how you criticize them. I think it's three. You have to coach them too. It can't just be about praise and criticism. Your work is appreciated. Eat some corn. Will tells a story about an interview he had. He says, uh, this guy came in, Williamsburg hipster, lumberjack style beard. I told him he'd have to shave it off if he wanted the job. He arrived the next day with a naked chin for the first time in years. I don't know if there's a greater sign of commitment. I get it. This is like the New York Yankees circa 2000. You want to get you know, clean shaven. At the same time, it was sort of off to me. The whole book is about how we're going to make fine dining more accessible, fine dining cool. And then you're going to turn around and say the person working in the front of house has to like, do something so silly as be clean shaven. I just don't think that's relevant. The opportunity right now is to build a team of individuals. How do you create an environment where using the individuality of each person, you can bring it together to get the most out of it. Ooh, kind of sounds like a recipe, Jaime, doesn't it? I don't really care about the beard, like deliver great service, be excited, do a good job, like bring your best, and you can keep the beard. These kinds of, you don't cut my hair. And finally, employees who aren't succeeding tend to fall into two camps, the ones who aren't trying and the ones who are. I mean, I would go so far as to say that we should have the same expectation out of our leaders. And today, it's clearer than ever that we have leaders across the hospitality industry, some that are leaning in and some who aren't. Some who care and some who don't. Some who are trying and some who are not giving it anything. While Unreasonable Hospitality was a great book, I think it's perfectly reasonable to expect more out of our leaders today. So if you work in hospitality, you work in service, or you just like food, I would recommend Will's book, Unreasonable Hospitality, not just for the hits, but also for the misses. Now, Back to work.